Sisters and brothers, hello and welcome once again to the Disability and Jesus Sunday service for this week, the third Sunday after Trinity, as we move into July and summer rolls on. England are being beaten in a test match. Lots of English and British players have been knocked out of Wimbledon. It feels like just another summer. The weather's a bit changeable and everybody's looking forward to some time off in August, I hope. But of course, nothing's ever ordinary and nothing's ever just the same because God comes to us afresh every day and calls us afresh every day to participate and work with him in his great work of mission and evangelism. And we hear something about that today in our gospel and in our reflection. But for now, let me simply say, it's great to be with you together, yet apart, as we worship God, as we share in fellowship, and as we open ourselves to the Holy Spirit and what he has to say to us today. For our prayers of penitence today, our words of confession. When I say the words, Lord have mercy, we repeat together, Lord have mercy. Or Christ have mercy, we repeat together, Christ have mercy. Let's pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then be open and honest and confess our sins in penitence and faith. For words spoken in haste, in judgment, without love. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For choosing not to act when we should, walking away, ignoring injustice. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For putting ourselves before others, saying, I want rather than we should. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And I receive these words of absolution and forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast your promises of peace won for us by your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 1 to 11 and 16 to 20. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be upon this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, The kingdom of heaven has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you 
listens to me. And whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That Gospel reading from Luke of the sending of the 72 is a very familiar reading to many of us and for good reason because it talks so much about what our ministry is as Christ's disciples and of course it begins with Jesus sending out his disciples in mission and in evangelism and sending them out together. And that speaks to our task as his disciples today. That stems from our baptism. Whoever we are, lay or ordained, whatever role we play or don't play in our churches and in the structures, whatever our stage of life, we are called to be disciples engaged in mission and evangelism because that's the lifeblood of being Christians. That's what it means to follow Jesus in the way. And all of us have particular callings and particular vocations within that overall vocation of the church. We all have our particular things to do in terms of mission and in evangelism, to serve those agendas where we are and in the relationships that we have and in the ways in which we can. So looking at this story and looking at what Jesus asked of these disciples whom he sent out today can help us to think through our own discipleship, our own call, our own vocation as Christians in the world today. And the first thing that Jesus asks these 72 to do as they go out in pairs is to exercise a ministry that's not simply an individual ministry. It's a partnership at the very basic level. It's always something to be done with others. And it's something to be done for a particular reason. And that reason is to prepare the ground for Jesus. He sent them on ahead of him in pairs to all the places where he himself intended to go. And it's our job as Christians to prepare the ground for Jesus wherever we go, to make people ready, help people to be ready to encounter Jesus, whether for the first time or whether afresh for the umpteenth time, to keep that ground open, to keep that ground receptive. And we do that in the ways in which we encourage and enable each other, in the ways in which we nurture one another in our teaching and our learning about Jesus, about God, about who we are as the church, and in the ways in which we model that for each other. We prepare the ground. We are with other people in such a way that it helps them to encounter Jesus. And because this is a ministry that we don't do as individuals, that we always do in partnership, we're called as we go to pray, to pray for fellow workers, for more labourers to be sent into the harvest. We should never think as Christians, as ministers, as disciples, that we are it, that it all depends on me, because it doesn't. We're not to focus on our own ministry but on the ministry that we share together. And we're called to pray that more and more people would be called to participate in that ministry and in that evangelism and mission. As we go, though, sometimes it's not plain sailing. Sometimes we have to face difficulty and even danger. And so Jesus was calling his disciples to be prepared to go even when the way ahead looks tough. 
And sometimes that's what we have to do as well. We have to be prepared for it not to be plain sailing. We have to remember that our faith isn't one in which we can say, well, now I've met Jesus, everything will be wonderful, everything will be easy, everything will be absolutely plain sailing. No, the ups and the downs still come, the challenges, the difficulties, sometimes, yes, the dangers. But we're called to keep going with Jesus. We're called to keep going in his mission to the world. And we're called as we go to travel light. Jesus told the 72 to carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, but to go with a, a single-minded determination to travel the road upon which he'd sent them. He told them to travel light partly for practical reasons, so that they weren't encumbered by lots of things that they didn't need, that they weren't worrying all the time about their material possessions and about what they had with them and about looking after that more than looking after the job that Jesus had given them to do. But also, of course, he told them to travel light so that, in a spiritual sense, they would know that they were reliant on God and they would be ready and prepared to rely on God and put their lot in with God. That's so desperately important in ministry that we realise it's not in our own resource and in our own strength that we do this, but that we do it in the strength that God gives us. So Jesus sends them out, and he sends them out first of all with a task and a message, a task and a message to offer and to pronounce peace. Now he doesn't mean that in the sense that the old Star Trek uh, crew used to do. If you're as old as me, you'll remember Captain Kirk beaming down to various alien planets and saying, we come in peace, set your phasers to kill. It was always, we come in peace if we can get what we want and if you'll do things the way we want you to do them and if you listen to us and obey our commands, but if you don't, woe betide you. Now Jesus says, go and pronounce peace shalom from God and that means inclusion and it means welcome and it means all sorts of other things that bring wholeness to life. Go and pronounce wholeness to people's lives and offer that and if your peace rests on people then stay with them. And that's so important because it's about a ministry that begins by seeking and receiving hospitality. When Jesus says go, he doesn't just mean go to another physical location, go thousands of miles away, go and be a missionary, go and work with particular groups of people who are much in need. What he says when he says go is go and stand on the ground that belongs to other people. Be in the space that belongs to other people. Enter the culture and the context of other people and receive hospitality. We're so used as the church to being the ones who want to give hospitality, to welcome people in. Come to us and meet Jesus. But Jesus says, go, go and receive the hospitality that people have to offer. Go and stand in the place where they are comfortable, not where you are comfortable. Go and stand in the place that feels like home to them. Go and be in their context. Go and operate within their culture and receive what they have to offer you in the way of hospitality. And in return, you can offer ministry. You can bring the love of God to bear on people, on communities, ultimately on the world itself. But you earn the right to offer that and to have it accepted by first receiving the hospitality of those among whom you go. You build a relationship. You build something that's based on your love for them that stems from God's love for us all and at the point where they're ready to hear it, you can encourage them 
about God's love for them. Once they've seen that you receive their hospitality, then they might just be ready to receive yours and to receive God's. And of course within that, Jesus calls his disciples, these pairs of disciples, to go also and give a watchman's warning to those who refuse to accept or to acknowledge the peace that they're sent to bring, to explain to them that we all have choice, but that our choices have consequences. And if we reject peace, if we reject the love of God, then that does have consequences, and we have to be honest about that. But at the end, having shared in all of that ministry, having offered all of that love, having received all that hospitality, and having been to all those places to which Jesus sent them, these 36 pairs of disciples, they come back. And what do they do? They're amazed to tell Jesus what impact they've had. Even the demons bow to us in your name, Lord. And Jesus corrects them. He challenges them not to rejoice in what they have done, as if it was them that did it anyway. Not to rejoice in the ego trip of how wonderful it's been and what we've achieved and what we've accomplished in your name, Lord, but actually to rejoice in what God has done for them. Because in exercising the ministry that they've been called to exercise, they've gone deeper into their discipleship. They've learned something about the humility of receiving hospitality and building relationships with people, not on their own terms, but on the terms that work for the people that they've met. And they've encountered what it means, not simply to offer the love of God, but to receive the love of God through these people whom they've gone to tell about God. They've come to an understanding about how, even though they went to prepare the ground for Jesus, God was there ahead of them. God was working before them. And they've simply gone out to join in with God's mission. And so they should rejoice that they are co-workers with God. That they are in fellowship with God, with each other and with all those who've been touched by God's love. And they should rejoice that what that means is they are citizens of God's kingdom. People of heaven. And they're called to bring something of that to the world around them. Sisters and brothers, as we go about our Christian lives, whether we stay in one place and don't move from there, or whether we travel miles and miles on what we do for Jesus, let's be encouraged by what Jesus tells his disciples today, the model that Jesus gives them, the call that he asks them to exercise. Let's be encouraged to always remember our calling. Always be ready to prepare the way for Jesus. Always ready to pray for more to join us in this collaborative enterprise. To be ready to face what's ahead of us. To offer and pronounce peace. To seek and to receive hospitality. To offer a ministry of sharing the love of God. Of reminding people what choices they have. And what the consequences of those choices might be. And to rejoice, not to rejoice as if this is our own achievement, but to rejoice that we have a share in the ministry and mission of God as his co-workers, as citizens of heaven, here in earth. Amen. Our intercessions today are adapted from Celtic Daily Prayer by David Adam. Simple sentences with the repeated refrain, Lord, come in hope. And so we pray. With all who are suffering from hunger, Lord, come in hope. With the world's refugees, Lord, come in hope. With all prisoners of tyranny and war, Lord, come in hope. 
with all who are exploited. Lord, come in hope. With all who are overlooked. Lord, come in hope. With all who are without work. Lord, come in hope. With all who are in darkness and weariness. Lord, come in hope. With all who are in doubt and despair. Lord, come in hope. With all who are in trouble and fearfulness. Lord, come in hope. With all who are in sickness and weakness. Lord, come in hope. With all who are frail and at the point of death. Lord, come in hope. We pray together. God of hope, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord's Prayer Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the road rise to meet you. The rain fall soft upon your fields. The sun shine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, may God keep you safe in the hollow of his hand. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.